everybody, and welcome to the first live presentation of the Unbreakable Me podcast. And I just want to let you guys know that the general purpose of this podcast is that I seek out masters and experts who have really taken certain aspects of their life to the next level. And we bring them on board to be able to learn how to integrate those into our lives so that we can all be moving towards the unbreakable lifestyle. And my name is Kyle Zagrodsky. I am, among other things, the founder and the CEO of Osteo Strong Musculoskeletal Strength Conditioning System. And here next to me today, this unopposing sort of man here, he's uh, this is Dr. Omar Hamada. Or Dr. Omar. Omar, Omar, Omar. <laughs> there you go. You're going to go with Dr. Omar. You've only known me like 10 years. Yeah. Well, I never call you Omar Hamada. No, I just call don't. you Omar. So just try to say that five times fast. Uh, anyway, so um, he is a lieutenant colonel with the special forces. And you're currently out of military, but you haven't officially retired yet. And you work as a surgeon in various uh, emergency rooms around the country. And I thought that it would be great to have him on board today uh, to talk about uh, the subject on everybody's mind. And there's been a lot of new uh, information, like news on this subject is coming out constantly. And uh, there's been some really exciting things happen this week. So we want to talk about uh, the coronavirus, not only some of the things we've learned about it, the new treatments that are you might be hearing about on the news in the past couple of days, and things you can do because it is it is our belief that it is when you're going to get in contact with this virus and not if so my good friend doctor um yeah please tell me a little bit about um the virus and you know why you think such drastic measures are being taken um with what's going on with shutdowns and this kind of thing yeah, you know the unknown is always scary right when when we are faced with things that we don't understand or things that are new and novel, mm -hmm. you've heard this is a novel virus, we get scared and sometimes we will react in ways that sometimes don't make sense and sometimes they do. So with this coronavirus, you know, everybody's saying, oh, it's a novel virus, it's a new virus. It's a novel strain, but the coronavirus has been around a long time. And it's actually responsible for 30% of the common cold that we get on an annual basis. Yeah, I heard so, that. Yeah, so one out of three colds that you see from you know, one year to the next is actually a coronavirus. And then there was a very virulent strain that we saw in 2002, 2003, that was responsible for the SARS epidemic mm -hmm. back there in 2002. And SARS stands for um, severe acute respiratory syndrome. We're going to get back to SARS in a second, okay. um, because uh, there's a question that I don't hear at people asking very often about SARS. And it was kind of a scary thing. And you got it. You were in tough shape. But we'll get to that in a second. So why is it? Um, let's talk a little bit about death rates and who who I mean, we, we've heard this. Right. Right. And I hear we've got, you know, death rates are anywhere between one to four percent. But that's people who are tested and they actually think that many, 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 many more people are having it, either not showing symptoms or mild symptoms. And so there's an all likelihood that um, that it's the death rates are much lower. But. If you if you put in the sub one percent range, and, and I'm not saying it is, I mean you're the doctor, I'm not a doctor, and I don't have all the data, but I've heard res reputable people who know, and they they've said that they believe it's going to be somewhere below sub one percent. Now, if that is the death rate, let's just say for the sake of this conversation, why shut down everything? Well, because we don't know yet. What we do know is, like you're saying, that the fatality rate has been anywhere from 1.6% here to 4% worldwide to as high as 8% in Italy. But we're not testing everybody, right? Yeah, we're but testing I, I will, those I will, who are ill. I will challenge you a little bit on that. Yes, that's what's reported. But I know in Italy, what they, I, you correct me if I'm wrong, because I think you might have heard the same statistic that 99% of the people who are dying from it are people that were about to die anyway. I don't know I mean, that that may not right. I may not be saying that the right way I right. given that but I'm just certainly a point. certainly aged or um, you know perhaps more ill and it tends to be up in the northeast of Italy I think you know when we look at those who are sort of socially quarantined on their own in the southern parts of Italy because of just that's how they live mm -hmm. um, it's not as high but in like Milan and other places up in the northeast uh, where there's more trade so so you think the concern is that it's the death rate 
that cares scares everybody. Or the, is the or, or is that, it right? or is it the um, the high uh, the high contagion, how do you say it? Contagion. So, so high, high contagion factor. Or high, so the transmissibility. To tra okay, you're just saying all these big words. <laughs> so you're, um, so uh, people get it easier, right? Yeah, there you so go. that's what that's I easy. was thinking, and correct me if I'm wrong, I was thinking that um, the concern was overwhelming the medical system and that by social distancing, it's not to protect you from the virus necessarily, it's to slow down the rate that people get it because they don't want to potentially overwhelm the system. And then we didn't really know the death rates and who needed to be hospitalized and all this kind of stuff. Like I've known people who've had this virus. I didn't come in contact with them. They're in another state and they were quarantined and they just got over it. Yeah. And they just said, yeah, I was sick and felt kind of bad and had a little fever one day. And it was like a mild case of the flu. Yeah. And 98% of people are just going to really just get over it. But even what we're seeing in terms of the numbers of the ones that we know are positive, up to 20% of those 40 and younger are getting admitted to the hospital and half of those to the ICU. Some of that can be just a reflexive fear that we need to make sure they're in a more controlled situation. Mm -hmm. But when we look at hospital bed availability, in the United States, we have about a million hospital beds on approximately, and uh, probably 10% of those are ICU beds. So let's say we have 100,000 ICU beds in the country. Mm -hmm and a million hospital beds. If we're looking at, you know, what percentage, let's say even half of 300 million getting sick all at the same time, mm -hmm. it would overwhelm the system pretty quickly. That's why I think they're wanting to, they're well, talking about Actually, yeah, I think that's even the wrong way to look at it. What percentage of those beds are actually being used at any given time? A lot of them. Yeah, let's say yeah. it's 80%, yeah. 90%. Yeah, so, so there's, there's, not, there's, much there's, there's not much yeah. margin. Uh, so, yeah, um, I, so one of the things I thought was kind of heartening today uh, of this week, a couple of days ago. So like 36 hours before it came on the news, I was reading about this. And then the next day it was uh, Trump was talking about it was on the news like, oh, my gosh. OK, that news travel fast. Yeah. So we're talking a little bit here about the medications that are talking can treat it now. Um, well, let's let's hear about them. There's there's two that are being bantered about, and then there's um and then there's a, a one that you take in conjunction. So tell me about those medications a little bit. So I'm not sure exactly how they discovered this, but there are anti-malarial drugs that we give to prevent and treat malaria. One of them is chloroquine. Some people get worried that it's the methylquine one that causes all the hallucinations and nightmares, but it's not. Chloroquine doesn't do that. It I have has, friends of mine that took that on purpose in college. Yeah, I'm really? Not just kidding. <laughs> I bet. Um, so somehow we discovered that chloroquine actually significantly improves um, the uh, responsiveness that patients have to medical care. And within a five or six day period, they're getting well uh, when they're taking chloroquine. Now add azithromycin or Zithromax here in the United States, as it's known. Uh, to also treat subsequent pneumonias, and it's almost 100% at five days of a complete cure. See, that's amazing. And uh, the, uh, and so with the chloroquine, I mean, that, that medication has been around since 1945. It's, uh, and it's actually one of the reasons why they think that people in third world countries that are taking this medication aren't getting the disease because it could also be used as a preventative, but it, could, um, but it, it also accelerates people getting over it. And when I heard that, I thought, OK, here's a here's a drug that's approved. It's been around for decades. We the the side effects or the people that shouldn't be taking it are extremely well known. Um, and since we're not going to have a, a, um, a vaccine for a year, year and a half, maybe two, you know how these things go. Then I thought, OK, well, every sanity is going to come back because we're like, OK, we have we have an off ramp. We have right. a way to get treated. So. And then within two or three days, you know, there are two or three states closing down everything. And I'm like, what is the point of closing down everything? Now, I heard that the um, of the people that are being tested, that the um, the doubling rate of infections like every four days. Yeah. Well, I don't, you know, I, I'm not a mathematician, but I got a calculator and that's like everybody in like 30 days. Right. So what's the point of all this? this craziness. What do you think is going well, on? I think two things. We want to reduce the number of people that are exposed to it that will get sick and thus reduce reduce the death rates. But two, you know, they talk about the flattening of the curve. 
Um, what we're actually seeing is a hockey stick, and it's not flattening; it's taking off. Yeah, but if you but got the hope but, is, but if you have this um, chloroquine out there, yeah. as a, So then the question becomes: Okay, right now Bayer, I think, has donated three million free tablets to the market. Right? Mm -hmm. um, we don't know. I don't know what the store, how much they actually have in storage, and how quickly they can produce it. But let's say we have a population of three hundred million. I don't know. Maybe it's three hundred fifty million. Um, let's say fifty percent of them get sick. Um, then. How much chloroquine is that going to take? Yeah, but you, they're also saying that they would. I mean, it's, you don't want to start take start taking drugs if you don't need them. Right. So exactly. those, you, you know, those are going to be used for people who are already immune system compromised and that kind of thing. So you're looking at still one one maybe five percent of the cases are going to be getting it, and they're from what I understand ramping up production rapidly. Right. And like you said, it's been around for decades, so it shouldn't be that difficult to really produce. I mean, I don't, I, I don't want to make. I'm. I'm. I, you know, I'm a, I'm a chronic pragmatic pragmatist. I, everything to me, I'm always black and white. I'm looking for the truth of things in everything I do. I mean, I'll, I'll change my mind like this. If I have better facts right. that, that destroy a, a paradigm or a, a perspective I have, I don't hold on to things because it's my identity. My identity is facts. Mm -hmm. And so from when I look at this, um, I, and the only thing I could think of with the social distancing is they're only trying to slow it down for a little while to get these measures in place um, because it seems like, and I know I've heard of other things too that are, that are very helpful, but they're not as practical um, from a large scale usage. Like they'll take a uh, plasma and uh, a plasma from, from people who've had it and now they've got the antibodies and then they can give another person that plasma and they get over it like, like 24 to 36 hours later, they feel substantially better. And that's what happened that's when not we had practical, Ebola is it? in the United States. Well, there were so, like with Ebola, there were, I think, two or four patients that had it, I yeah, believe. Yeah. And they used one guy's plasma. He was actually a physician that was over in Africa that came back. Uh, and they gave it to the patients, I think, in Texas and wherever else they were. And, yeah, it cured them. Amazing. So um, that's really interesting. Um, uh well, so I think, least, you know, I, I think you're right. We don't want to overblow it. But at the same time, I think, you know, good balance. We don't want to over to, to, to say it's not a problem because I think it really is. But I think that there are things in place that are going to help us overcome it quicker than we might hope. Yeah. So uh, uh, let's, uh, let's I think that because it's more has to do with when you're going to encounter it, not if you're going to encounter it. I think really the only the only strategy, like once I know that there was a a, a cure, you know, or a, or a, a highly effective a treatment for this, that it made more sense to to okay, then just beef up your immune system. You're going to encounter this anyway. Go live your life and stop worrying about it. And so there's just some very simple strategies that people could implement um, that will really help them. I mean, they're well known, well documented, well studied, and I'm just going to kind of roll through those and get your opinion on. So I even brought some, some visual aids here. So check that out. You know, you've probably nice. never seen this before everybody. This one is called vitamin D3. I got this at Costco today for like $13. Um, and so vitamin D3. Now uh, tell me a little bit about vitamin D3. Like, like what do you know about its effectiveness for, for your health? You know, we used to think it only affected like skin and eyes. And now we see that it's involved in almost everything from the immune system to yeah, skin and brain and eye health and all that. Um, and most of us as Americans are deficient in vitamin D because most of us live and work indoors. Very few of us actually work outdoors and farmers maybe. Yeah. But most even, you know, so we don't have that much uh, active um, exposure to sunlight, which is what we must have to. It's the, it's the only vitamin that the human body could actually make. Yeah, exactly. And um, I read somewhere like 80 or 90 percent of Americans, and this probably goes for most of the Western world or anybody's working in, indoors, is like uh, is highly deficient. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I also I was listening to a doctor to give a talk about eight or nine years ago. And I don't know if it was true. I didn't double check this on it, but they were, they were saying that even your chances of getting cancer are substantially lower if you're taking at least eight or 10,000 units of D3 a day. Is that accurate? It is. I would say, you know, 5,000 is what I, if you're consistent with it every single day, I'd try to nail 5,000. It's a fat soluble vitamin. 
um, meaning you don't want to you don't want to take overdo it, on, it. You don't want to take it on an empty stomach or just with water. You need to have some fat with it as right. you take it. Exactly, but also it's not wasted like some of the water soluble vitamins, like vitamin C, would be. So you can take too much over a long period of time. But if you're taking five thousand units a day every day and you're consistent, I think that's great. Well, if you're taking fifty thousand a day and you're consistent, you may end up getting. I heard you've got to take trouble. like forty-five thousand units to become toxic, and then, like you said, uh, I don't know what the rate that my body uses it. So right. uh, when 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 I'm at home, I'm taking five thousand units a day. When I travel, I take ten thousand units a day, and I and I never get sick. That's one of the strategies yeah. I use. The, uh, the other thing that um, people are doing now, and I, and I believe in this too, is uh, probiotics. Mm -hmm. So probiotics are a big thing. So you either have good bacteria in your gut or you have bad bacteria in your gut. And the way you get bad bacteria to, to proliferate is eating bad food, sugar, mm -hmm. fried food, bad bacteria, loves bad food. And it's actually, it makes you fatter and all kinds of things that it does to your body. Um, but you can take uh, probiotics and it inspires healthy. And it, and it's not just a fat loss thing. It's an immune system thing. That's like one of your front line of defenses. And so yeah. um, gut well, health is really important. for immune system. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about some of the problems historically with probiotics. So a lot of times, you know, you take stuff off the shelf and it's dead. I mean, you've got the bacteria. You think, you know, they say, you know, how many ever million colony forming units and then it's been on the shelf for three months and you take it and you're actually taking dead bacteria that aren't doing anything. Mm -hmm. Another process good. Yeah, they taste good. <laughs> that's right. And that's the Sounds other problem is, you know, a lot of like with the gummies, a lot of sugar. Yeah. And um, is that really going to be good for you? Well, the other thing I heard too was that the your stomach acid kills the bacteria. So you could be taking a nice quality reputable brand and then you just take on it uh, uh with food or empty stomach and your body your 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 stomach acid just destroys most of it that's why you have to look for good probiotics that are either in spore formulation mm -hmm. so they are um, basically hibernating and you take them they go through the stomach and then they come back to life yeah. in the gut uh, or you take some that are encapsulated properly so they don't get dissolved until after they pass through the stomach yeah so here's a, here's one I, i'm not here to sell you anything uh, I don't make any money off of nature's bounty, uh, but here's one by shift. Now I don't, I don't know anything about this product, but one of the things I liked about it, it's, it's a gummy probiotic that I got at Costco and, um, and it says, it says the thing actually, it has a natural protein shell, which I think is probably in that, that spore state you were talking yeah. about. And they said that that is sufficient to pass through the uh, acid of your stomach to get into your lower gut, which is what you need. Uh, so I thought that was pretty cool. The only thing I like about it is um, they're, they're, they're gummies. So they got sugar in them. And I'm like, you know, if you really cared about people's health, would you put sugar in a vitamin? Mm -hmm. I mean, I guess they're just trying to get kids to take them, I guess. But it's only three grams of sugar per serving. So I guess it's not heinous. But a serving is what? One? Two. Yeah. Two? Yeah. See, that's not enough. I don't want a whole handful. Yeah. I well, know. You just can't <laughs> stop at that. You're going to become a bacteria colony. Right. So uh, they'll do an invasion of the body snatchers. You'll become bacteria. Um, this one... I know this one's going to be a shocker for everyone. You probably never heard of this before, but it's called fish oil. So fish oil, it's a thing. It's uh, omega-3 fatty acids. Now, uh, oh, I was going to say some two things. Actually, I forgot about vitamin D. This is a big deal, actually. Oh, yeah, with a K2. Yeah, so, um, so I own a company that specializes in probably the leading world authority on building bone strength without pharmaceuticals around the globe. All right, so I know a little bit about bone. Um, and a lot of people, you know, you go look at almost every bone supplement vitamin that you could buy on the market. And what's it got in it? Calcium, vitamin D3, K2, magnesium, phosphorus. All these things are in there. Why? Because those nutrients have been shown to build bone, right? Right. Well, here's the crazy thing about it. And the supplement manufacturers know this. Vitamin D3 and vitamin K2 compete for absorption. So if you're taking them in the same vitamin at the same time, guess what? You're likely getting very little of those nutrients. Is that accurate? It is accurate. Yeah. Uh, and the other great thing about K2 is it's not just used for bone, like D3, it's used for several different things. It also helps with cardiovascular health. I know, it's like, this it's is like the, this is like the wonder drug. I mean, a natural supplement. Vitamin D3 is something I take, whether there's a virus going around or not, like this is 
it, it helps with athletic performance too. I heard it, it does. does all kinds of stuff. So the other thing about and, and this triggered me on this one, made triggered the thought is omega three. Everybody's always talking about omega threes and omega six. You got to have one to one ratio, right? Well, how do you know how much you're getting? Because if you you probably I didn't I didn't I just learned this recently from uh, Dr. Jason Miracolton. The amount of vitamins D uh, omega six that's actually in like almonds and seeds and other nuts, uh, fried food. I kind of knew that one, uh, but almonds, like you can eat a handful of almonds and you end up getting like 10 or 20 times the amount of vitamin, uh, amount of omega six that you actually need. And the other thing that people don't tell you is that vitamin, I mean, I can call them vitamin omega six and omega three also compete for absorption and you can't take them at the same time. So if you have an abundance of omega six in your system, it blocks your absorption of omega three and vice versa. So it's, it's crazy. You can't take those things at the same time. So I'll take fish oil because all I got to do is take this and I know there's no six in it. So I'm good. And you I, know, I would make sure with the fish oil though, that you're taking something that's been ultra purified and yeah. pharmaceutical grade, not just junk fish oil. Yeah. Um, because you want something that is actually a good hearty omega three. Yeah, I agree with that. I picked this one up at Costco today. I don't know if it's ultra purified or not. I'm not sure either. Because the longer it sits on the shelf, it could, shelf, it could also become um, rancid. Uh, it could also become yeah. rancid. People don't know that. That's that's true. Um, and I don't know about the um, efficacy so much or how much it's been studied, but colloidal silver. Do you know anything about colloidal silver? A little bit. Um, and I think, you know, one, we know that silver is an antibacterial. Yep. So it really helps with... Uh, with that yeah and so the the idea is so you can you can apply it on the outside i know there's there's um colloidal silver sprays for your hands and uh you can put it on bacteria i've seen people rub it on scar uh wounds and it heals faster and this kind of thing um but you could also ingest it and the the idea being if you're taking over a period of time that you actually start to build it up in your body and your t your tissues inside become more back or microbial resistant um, I, I was told that if you get one of these, um, that you're not supposed to take one more than 15 parts per million um, because it could turn you blue. It can. Look up the blue man on Google yeah, and you'll see thing. what it does. Yeah, so you guys got to be careful. Like follow the instructions on this stuff. I think 15 parts per million is the, uh, the, is the dosage you want because there one, there are ones that sell more than that. And if you're getting more than that, and you're like over consuming it because you're you're really afraid. Yeah, this was 15 parts per million. I just found it. So um, so yeah, this is a good one. RPG, go RPG. And turning blue is irreversible. Yeah. So, so unless you really like blue, that's right. um, don't uh, don't overdo that. But I've been taking like this. It's like uh, two tablespoons or two two teaspoons. I've been taking two teaspoons of this a day for like the past couple months. And I take this when I travel and I, I don't think I'm blue yet. So. Not yet. I'd add three other things. Vitamin C, maybe okay. up to four grams a day. Okay. Um, it actually potentiates the immune system function as well and is vital with collagen formation, bone formation and all that. Vitamin C is essential. Excellent. Excellent. Um, the other thing would be zinc and selenium. Um, those well, now, um, I was hearing too that the uh, coronavirus class in general isn't a fan of zinc. No. Yeah. None of them are. Yeah, none of them are. So uh, zinc's actually one of those things you want to take. And there was a, there was one I was just researching recently that I actually want to share with you guys. I have to look at my notes because I can never remember how to say it. Uh, in acetyl L and acetyl. Thank you. See, that's why you're here. Yeah. So they I call paid it a lot of money to learn how to pronounce that. I know. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. <laughs> Somebody had to do it. So you'll call it like if you look up if you go Google in. N is a Nancy, A, C is a cat, N, A, C supplement online. You can get this one. And so what it does, it helps boost like the cellular glutathione levels that you have. But even more than that, it also reduces lung inflammation. And I was listening to a doctor give a podcast very recently. And he was saying that with the onset of SARS, uh, not, not SARS, this new thing, COVID-19, that he's actually been taking a small dose of that every day and giving it to his family. Yeah, that's so great. that was pretty, pretty sweet. That's great. So um, one thing that yeah. you're triggering a thought for me when we talk about glutathione, there are three super uh, antioxidants that our body produces. We can't really take, but we can supplement to produce them. Catalase, superoxide dismutase, and glutathione. 
So if we can actually increase those in our body, that is something we'll help protect yeah, us against all sorts of things. That's one of the supplements I take. Um, and I actually, so I take supplements that, uh, so that people didn't know this, and I'm going to do a, a, a podcast on this in a week to 10 days, but I'm going to do a deep dive on micronutrient competition because what po people don't realize is that when, of, your, of your multivitamins, there's probably 40 micronutrients that are competing with each other. Mm -hmm. And uh, so you're not getting the nutrients you think. Your body needs those things. So I like I'm a fan. You can even like go for high quality, organically sourced, super awesome brand, well known. You get a lot of confidence in the brand, and then you don't realize it. But all those, not all of them, many of those key nutrients you can't even absorb. So I'm bringing in um, Dr. Jason Miri Calt Mira Calton uh, to talk about that in a week or two, because you guys got to know about this because I can't tell you how many tens of thousands of dollars I probably spent on supplements yeah. that went down the drain. And you know what? I don't know if this happened to you ever. Like I, I was taking a liquid multivitamin once on an empty stomach. Mm -hmm. Oh, I got, I got sick as a dog. Yeah. Yeah. I was driving to the gym. My wife and I were, and I got to the front of the neighborhood. I opened the door and threw up all over the street. Wow. And I guess people probably thought I was out partying last night. I was going to the gym. I was taking care of my body. I thought I was doing something good. The reason why you get sick taking multivitamins on an empty stomach is when you have certain micronutrients competing with each other, they create a certain kind of salt in your stomach and your stomach doesn't like it and it kicks it out. Yeah. And, uh, and as soon as I started like understanding micronutrient competition, I could take all of them on an empty stomach and they don't do anything to me because I don't have that competition. It's crazy. crazy. So I did want to go ahead and say this. Um, as the uh, CEO and founder of OsteoStrong, one of the things that that OsteoStrong at its core stands for is health and wellness. It's a place to get healthy. It's a place to get well. And um, it is like what our brand is about. And so I want to go and say this. So if, of the centers that can stay open, I am encouraging them to stay open. And then here's the reason why. If I thought that there was anything uh, an osteo strong that would contribute to the spread of this virus or be unsafe, we would have closed them down. The thing about it is, is about, it was like over a year ago, um, we started adding modalities to the concept that actually inspire and improve immune health and reduce inflammation. So you've got our base osteo strong devices and then you have other modalities that are available at many osteostrongs that actually reduce inflammation improve immune function all of these things and there's a, been a lot of a lot of uh, evidence that these things actually help you and so we looked at that and osteostrong is a once a week solution where uh you know people are in there for 10 or 15 minutes and they leave they don't break a sweat they're not sweating and spitting all over everything at least i hope they're not spitting all over everything <laughs> Um, and, uh, and there's these things that we can do in the center that can improve their immune function, all this kind of thing. So when this started going down, our centers, uh, really adopted the CDC, um, required, you know, cleanliness. So everything gets wiped down after every customer touches it. There's only a few people in osteo strong at a time because they're only coming in once a week. They're not sweating doing this kind of thing. So we feel it's an extremely place, like an extremely clean and safe place to be. Like I went to the store today. Um, there was hundreds of people in the store and I'm thinking, okay, there's, if, if Corona's here, I got it. <laughs> you know? And then I had to go fill up my car with gas and I'm thinking, okay, I'm touching this thing. And so I'm doing the antibacterial thing. And I'm thinking, you know what? If you're having to go gas, you're having to get food, you may have to go run the pharmacy, you're going where everybody else is going anyway. And Osteo Strong, we do have a limited number of people go there because it's a membership only uh, situation, but uh, we feel that it could really help with your immune system. And the, the owners are being super proactive. If they have members that they think are older or higher risk or immune system compromised or just scared, uh, a lot of the owners have expanded their hours and made accommodations for people to come in one on one. They don't all do that or can't do that for staffing limitation reasons or whatever. But if you want to know what modalities they have or how they can accommodate you, give them a shout. Uh, we are encouraging them to stay open if they can. In certain cases, there's mandatory shutdowns. And so we're not a gym. Um, so we don't have a lot of the, uh, the, the, the stuff that gyms have to deal with. Um, but I will tell you this, that, um, you know, Osteo Strong is, you know, we exist, um, to really deliver the maximum level of physical freedom and capability for people of all ages. I mean, that's what, that's what we're about. And the cool thing is, is 
several years ago, you know, I discovered that the purpose of my life is to help and serve other people. And I realized that was the purpose of my life because when I do, that is when I have the maximum level of joy and peace in my life when I'm helping and serving other people. And so, um, so here's the thing. I realize that there's a lot of people out there like that. Sometimes we don't always get to live in that state. I think that's when people become unhappy is when they have a heart to serve and help and then they don't. And then they do That's when they finally get a piece. So I think most people actually either have that in them or are living out that mission. And one of the things I guess I'm really blessed at is that we can attract people because that is our core value. The people that are owning the franchises are people of this heart, of this value system where they also love serving and helping others. And we've been seeing owners go and serve their members by people either think they should be quarantined or or uh, they're elderly and they can't get out of the house. They're bringing them food and groceries and supplies and doing that kind of thing. And, you know, Osteo Strong and it's changing the health paradigm in a radical way. Um, I believe we're going to be one of the top 10 wellness brands in the world in the coming years in terms of innovation and changing this paradigm of proactive health. Almost 100 percent of our customers come in every single week to do a session. And you guys, you guys that are members that are watching this, you, that is this is your movement. You are the fuel and the foundation behind this movie movement. It is it is your stories, your testimonials of radical change that you're seeing in your joint and back pain going away, your posture, your bone density, all this kind of thing. You are the fuel and you are the ones absolutely driving this movement to the level that it, it, it's not me. It's not our franchise owners. It's you guys. And I can tell you the members come from members and it just warms my heart. And it's the fuel in my tank that drives me to keep doing what I do every day. And so I want to say that uh, thank you from the bottom of my heart for those of you that have uh, used the system, who are seeing these amazing results. Um, you're my inspiration and you're the inspiration to future millions uh, that are going to be coming to Osteo Strong. And so, listen, I hope this uh, information was useful to you guys. I really thank you for your time. Thank you, Dr. Omar. My pleasure. Um, Dr. O. And uh, we really appreciate all of you being here. Love you guys. Thank you and be well, everybody. Take Thanks. care. Stay safe.